Hey guys, and welcome to the very beginning of my new video lecture series. Uh, well, I hope it's a series about forestry. Before we start, I'd like to get a few things out of the way. All of these lectures are intended to be used by Science Olympians competing in the event forestry. Also, I'm entirely self-taught, so there is a possibility that everything in these videos could be wrong. I certainly hope it's all accurate, but if you take notes on these videos, I encourage you to corroborate them with other sources to ensure their accuracy and further develop your understanding of these topics. Also, since I'm self-taught, my pronunciation of some words will probably be wrong. All I have to work with is Google Dictionary pronunciations. Um, these lectures will be structured in a way that I personally think makes the most sense and hopefully makes learning forestry the easiest it can be. I'm going to try to keep each of these lectures below the 10 minute mark so that they are easily digestible. Um, I'm also currently writing a short uh, 12 to 20 question quiz every Wednesday about different topics in forestry. I will link the folder to all of those quizzes in the description of this video. The first thing I want to talk about is the importance of etymology or the structure and meaning of words. Knowing different prefixes or suffixes can help you memorize terms much quicker and help you infer terms that you haven't seen before. For instance, consider the word mesophyll. Mesophyll, as you'll learn later on, is the middle layer of leaves where the vast majority of photosynthesis takes place. However, if we break the word apart into meso and phil, we can deduce much of that for ourselves. The prefix meso means middle or between, and the suffix phil refers to a leaf. Therefore, we can make an educated guess that mesophyll is the stuff in the middle of a leaf, which turns out to be true, is in between the upper and lower epidermis of a leaf. Another word to consider is syncarpus, which is an adjective that means that the carpels of a flower or fruit are united or fused together. The prefix syn means together, and carp refers to fruit, so we can guess that this word means that fruits or some parts of fruits, such as carpels, are together or fused. One last example is the word endocarp. The prefix endo means inside, and we know from before carp refers to fruit, so we can guess that endocarp is the innermost part of the fruit. It turns out that the correct definition is the inside layer of the fruit that surrounds the seeds, which is pretty close to our deduction. As you can see, etymology is a useful tool to keep in your forestry tool belt and will be especially useful for vocab multiple choice questions where all you have to do is pick the answer that fits the best, but not necessarily know exactly what the definition of a word might be. For example, consider the following vocab question and remember what we just talked about. So I'll give you a minute to look it over and Make your guess as to what the answer is, unless you know it, then it's not a guess. The answer is mesocarp. By knowing that the prefix meso from earlier means middle or in between, you can make an educated guess that B is the answer without knowing what a pericarp is or what any of the choices actually are. You'll become familiar with various common prefixes and suffixes in forestry, and I will occasionally call attention to the structure of vocab terms throughout these lectures. Now we can start talking about actual trees. My approach to these lectures will be to emphasize the purpose behind structures rather than simply knowing they exist to promote a deep understanding of these topics. Therefore, let's start with a simple question. What makes a tree a tree? Using the botanical definition, all trees are perennial, meaning that they live more than two years. Annuals and biennials live for one and two years respectively and are not considered trees. Trees also have elongated stem or trunk that acts as the main structural axis or centerpiece of the tree. Those are the absolute minimum requirements for being a tree, but many definitions also include that trees must be woody, 
and has supporting branches and leaves that branch off from the trunk. To make it easier, let's break the overall structure of a tree down into three parts, roots, trunk, and leaves. These descriptions will be brief and I will go into more detail in later lectures. The roots of a tree have several purposes such as gathering water and nutrients to help the tree grow, as well as anchoring the tree so it doesn't fall over from just a simple light breeze. There are a ton of different kinds of roots and a lot of interesting biology involved with them, but for now all you need to know is that roots are usually underground, get water and nutrients, and anchor the tree. The trunk is a characteristic part of any tree. It is usually the thickest woody part of the tree and runs vertically, whereas branches are typically horizontal. As stated before, I like to emphasize the purpose of each part, and this is no different. The purpose of the trunk is to elevate the leaves to a point where they are accessible to sunlight. It also transports water and nutrients collected in the roots and food produced in the leaves to the rest of the tree. The outermost layer of the trunk is called the bark. Bark is composed of mostly dead cells and exists to protect the living wood inside the bark from stuff like disease, animals, and weather. And lastly, the leaves of the tree is where photosynthesis takes place or where the food of the tree is made. If we examine the structure of the word photosynthesis, we can get an idea of its meaning. Photo refers to light. Uh, as you saw earlier, sin means together, and thesis comes from the Greek word for placing. So if we put all of those together, we get the definition of photosynthesis, which is synthesizing or putting together molecules to form glucose by using energy from light. The leaves need to be exposed to sunlight in order to make food, which is why it is important that the trunk raises them up high above obstacles that might obstruct sunlight. Leaves of trees come in all different shapes and sizes and are typically the primary characteristic used to determine the species of a tree. If you want to know the species of a tree but only get to take one piece of it, taking a leaf is usually going to be your best bet. The next topic I'd like to touch on is taxonomy. Taxonomy is the process of naming, describing, and classifying living things, and we do this so we can easily identify if a specimen is a new species or one already discovered by comparing it to our database of categorized organisms. It also acts as an easy and accessible way to present the genetic and physical similarities between species. The 2023 National Tree List in the Science Olympiad Rules Manual organizes trees into their taxonomic families. You've probably noticed that the italicized and bolded names on the list are not in English. That is because they are the scientific names, also called the Linnaean or binomial name, of the tree species. These names use Latin grammar, but are often derived from other languages such as Greek. The first part or word of the scientific name is the generic name or genus of the species. The generic name of a balsam fir is Apis, and that comes from to rise, which references the great heights that balsam firs can reach, or firs in general. The second part of the scientific name is the specific name. The specific name of a balsam fir is Balsamia. Together, the scientific name of a balsam fir is Apis balsamia. And to recap, families encompass genera, and genera encompass species. I will link further resources for taxonomy in the description, since there are several levels of classification above the family level, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to familiar yourselves with all of those levels. A common term in taxonomy is a clade or a group of organisms that share certain physical traits. All of the trees on the 2023 National Tree List are contained in the spermatophyte clade, and sh the shared trait of this clade is that organisms are all plants that make seeds. This clade can be broken into two smaller clades, angiosperms and gymnosperms. Every tree on the list is in one of these two clades, 
and knowing the shared characteristics in each clade is very important to your understanding of trees. Like many fields of biology, there are exceptions to every rule, but the following statements will hold true for the most part for all the trees that you deal with. So if we examine the etymology of these two words, uh, the root of angio means container, and the root of gymno means naked, and the root of sperm means seed. So if we put those together, we can get the identifying or shared traits of both of those clades, which are um, fruit for the angiosperm clade. All trees in the angiosperm clade produce flowers and fruit, and the seeds are contained in the fruit. For the gymnosperm clade, seeds are naked or unprotected, and those are typically in cones for the gymnosperm clade. They are not encompassed or contained as in the angiosperm clade. That's going to wrap it up for this lecture. I know it was a bit basic, but it was the introduction, so I'm hoping to go in more depth in later lectures. Hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.